There is a God who offers you help with no strings attached. There is a God in heaven who will offer you aid. He will give you support without any pressure or any expectation that you could ever pay him back. In fact, David spoke about the help offered by God by saying in Psalm 121, I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. And so I want to speak to each and every one of you listening. Your prayer when you wake up, before you go to sleep, before you leave your home, even as you're going about your business. Your prayer has to be, Lord, let me dwell in your shelter, O Most High God. Let me abide under your shadow, the shadow of the Almighty God. Saints, our prayer needs to be one that seeks the protection of the Lord, divine protection from above. The Bible says God is our refuge and strength a very present help in trouble. Our protection, our refuge, our strength, it is all in Him. So don't wait until trouble comes knocking for you to realize that you need God. Don't wait for the enemy to attack you for you to realize that God is your best form of protection. We need to always dwell in His shelter. We need to always be in a state of seeking the Lord so that he will watch over us and protect us when the storms of life come our way. We need to be found in him always because it's only in him that we have preservation. It's only in him that we have the strength and courage to face the enemy or the storm before us. So I encourage you, Don't be afraid or terrified. God goes before you. He will surround you and he'll cover you. Have you ever heard the saying, just say a prayer and weather the storm? Well, there is much more to it when it comes to surviving a storm in your life. Jesus gave us wonderful advice when it comes to preparing and surviving the storms of life. In Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 to 27, the Bible reads, Everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, but it did not fall, because it had been founded on the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. I want us to pay attention to this teaching. A wise person, a wise believer, will build their house on a firm foundation on a sturdy and strong foundation. This is so that when the forces of nature wreak havoc on that house, the strong foundation will hold it in place so that the house doesn't go under or it's not blown away. A strong foundation will keep the house steady whenever nature attacks in the form of strong winds, hurricanes, or earthquakes. A strong foundation doesn't just benefit the house. It also benefits the occupants because it is a safe refuge for all inside. And so when the Bible tells us to be like a wise man who built his house on the rock, it's telling us that we need to build our faith on the firm foundation that is Jesus Christ. We're being told to place our hope on the solid foundation that is Jesus Christ. This is because when the forces of evil try to wreak havoc on your life, the strong foundation on which your faith is built upon will not be overcome. The walls in your life will not be breached. 
When you have built your foundation on the solid rock that is Jesus Christ, you are not shaken by the earthquakes of life. You are not blown away by the winds of life. You are not taken under by the floods of life. And this is all because God will never fail you. He will never let you down. And so, saints, let me encourage you. Let your foundation be Jesus Christ. Let your faith be in Jesus Christ. Let your reason for joy, your reason for hope be because of Jesus Christ. Because truly, I tell you, when you stand on the solid rock that is Jesus Christ, you will survive when the rain falls. You'll survive when the floods come. You won't be destroyed when the winds blow. I'd like to encourage you from Psalm 91. From verse 1 to 4 reads, He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God, in whom I trust. For he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions and under his wings you will find refuge. Now I'd like to draw your attention to who it is that will be your protection and your rescue during those tough times. The Most High, the one and only Supreme Sovereign God, the Almighty, one who is in a position of strength, power, and authority. So be of good cheer. You don't have an ordinary search and rescue party with a boat and flashlights. No, you have the Most High God. You have the Almighty One. If you know what's coming, you can prepare. That's why the Bible says, take up the whole armor of God. That way, you'll be able to withstand in the evil day. And we have to make a conscious decision to keep following Jesus, no matter the cost. You are not without help. God is on your side. He is actually rooting for you and giving you the ability to overcome. He has filled you with His Holy Spirit, which is able to conquer every force of darkness. In Proverbs 16, verse 3 and 4, the Bible says, Commit to the Lord whatever you do, and He will establish your plans. The Lord works out everything to its proper end, even the wicked for a day of disaster.